hygiene in Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that cleanliness is one half of faith. General hygiene. Fingernails and toenails should be clipped. Pubic hair and armpits should be shaved at least once every 40 days. A moustache should be closely trimmed clear of the mouth. After one uses the toilet, the private parts should be cleaned free of filth, using water if available. Any traces of filth must be washed from the body and clothes before prayer. If one is going to pray with his or her shoes on, they should check and remove any trace of filth from beneath them before they pray in them. One should smell pleasant and generally keep a neat and tidy appearance. It is reported that when Al-Hassan, the son of Ali, prayed, he would wear his best clothes. When he was asked about this, he said, Verily, Allah is beautiful, and he loves beauty, so I beautify myself for my Lord. One of the three things Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved was perfume. Wudu ablution. Yeah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Allah does not accept the prayer of one who has nullified his ablution until he performs it again. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The key to paradise is prayer, and the key to prayer is cleanliness, ablution. Intention The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The reward of deeds depends upon the intention, and a person will get the reward according to what he has intended. The intention here means that one must have cleared their heart and mind and focused purely on perfecting the ablution in order to please their Lord. Saying Bismillah in the name of Allah. Before beginning the ablution, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would say, in the name of Allah. Bismillah. Washing the hands. Muhammad, peace be upon him, poured water on his hands and washed them three times. Rinsing the mouth. He then rinsed his mouth three times. Rinsing the nose. Then he sniffed water into his nostrils using his right hand and blew out using his left hand three times. Washing the face. He then washed his face three times, washing the beard. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would run his fingers through his beard, washing the forearms.
Then he took a handful of water and washed his right forearm, and again took another handful of water and washed his left forearm. Wiping the head. Then he wiped his head and entered his two index fingers into his ears and wiped the backs of his ears with his thumbs, washing the feet. And he washed his feet up to the ankles three times. When the prophet, peace be upon him, made ablution, he would enter the water between his toes with his little finger. Supplication. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If one completes and perfects the ablution, and then says, I testify that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him, and he may enter through any gate he wishes. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Summary: Make an intention and say Bismillah. Wash the hands. Rinse the mouth. Rinse the nose. Wash the face, wash the beard, wash the forearms, wipe the head, and wash the feet. General points about ablution. Water usage. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to perform a complete ablution with just two handfuls of water. Brushing the teeth. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if I had not found it hard for my followers or the people, I would have ordered them to clean their teeth with siwak, the Muslim toothbrush, for every prayer. Beginning with the right, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved to begin with his right side while cleaning or purifying himself. Washing each part, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed ablution washing each part once twice or three times, except the head, which he only wiped once. Tayammum, dry ablution. Make an intention, saying Bismillah. Strike the palms of the hands once on clean earth, such as sand, or any clean surface on which dust has collected. Blow off the excess. Wipe each hand up to the wrist. Wipe the face. What nullifies ablution? After one uses the toilet, touching the private parts, loss of consciousness, deep sleep, passing wind. When bathing is required, performing ghusl. After sexual intercourse, after having a wet dream, after menstruation, period after postnatal bleeding. Performing kusul bathing. Make an intention, saying Bismillah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, washed both hands three times.
He would then pour water from his right hand to his left hand and wash his private parts. Next, he performed a complete ablution. Then he took some water and put his fingers to the roots of his hair to the extent that he sees that the skin is wet. Then he poured water over his head three times and then over the rest of his body. Medical Benefits of Prayer and Ablution Everything that Allah prescribes has a wisdom behind it. The medical world is continuously discovering amazing medical benefits from performing prayer and ablution. When a Muslim performs his five daily prayers, he is taking preventative measures against many diseases and illnesses of the body. Performing ablution has been scientifically proven to have many physical benefits. Washing the hands prevents the transmission of many contagious diseases. Washing the face recharges such organs as the intestines, stomach and bladder, as well as having a positive effect on the nervous and reproductive systems. Washing the mouth removes food particles that could cause teeth and gum problems. Washing the nostrils removes germs trapped inside so they do not reach the respiratory system. Washing the ear decreases high blood pressure and relieves tooth and throat pain, as well as removing any extra wax that could cause ear infection and general body imbalances. Repeated washing of the face invigorates facial skin cells and helps prevent early wrinkles. It also helps invigorate the ends of the blood vessels as well as the nerves and glands that are near the skin surface and therefore helps them perform their functions efficiently. The last step of ablution, washing the feet, helps prevent athlete's foot, a fungal problem of the feet. Ablution also helps prevent skin cancer as the areas washed during ablution are the parts of the body that are most prone to exposure to pollution, both internal and external. Ablution removes this pollution five times a day and therefore maintains a clean outer layer of the skin, which in turn assists cells underneath to function properly. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also encouraged performing ablution before going to bed. This same ritual is also encouraged by yoga experts who say that washing important motor and sensory organs such as the hands, arms, eyes, legs and mouth before sleep using cool water relaxes the body preparing it for a deep sleep. The different positions offered during prayer have many physical benefits. During prostration the extra blood flow to the brain has a positive effect on memory, vision, hearing, concentration and the psyche. Those who offer their prayers regularly have more willpower and have fewer incidences of headaches and psychological problems. The increased blood flow to the face drains the sinuses, decreasing the chance of inflammation of that area. Prostration also reduces the possibility of developing hernia or hemorrhoids. Moreover, prostration allows for the one-third of air retained in the lungs to escape, which the body is unable to exhale while standing upright or in any other position. In the unique position of prostration, the back and neck muscles are exercised and therefore both areas are strengthened. It is done 34 times a day, hence its amazing physical benefits. Bowing, prostrating and getting up all activate numerous muscles in the body, increasing physical well-being. Even the final sitting position has a soothing and calming effect both on the body and mind. Glory be to Allah, the creator of all that exists.